The concept of stellar parallax played an important role in the historical development of astronomy and is still important today because it offers our only direct method for measuring the distances of stars. You can demonstrate the basic idea of parallax by holding your hand at arm's length and then watching how it appears against objects in the distance as you alternately close your left and right eyes. As this animation shows, even if you keep your hand perfectly still, it will appear to move back and forth compared to mountains or other objects in the distance. This apparent movement of your hand is called parallax. The effects of parallax are larger on nearer objects than more distant ones. The lower frame shows a photographer viewing a scene with a man, a more distant set of trees, and even more distant mountains. The upper frame shows the view through her camera. As the photographer moves to her right, the view through her camera shows the man appearing to move to the left relative to the trees and mountains, even though he is standing still. The trees also seem to move relative to the mountains, but not as much as the man because they are farther away. We do not notice any parallax shift for the distant mountains in this scene. Stellar parallax occurs for the same basic reason. This animation shows that as Earth orbits the Sun, the positions of nearby stars appear to shift relative to the positions of more distant stars. Stellar parallax therefore represents direct proof that Earth orbits the Sun. Returning to our starting diagram, we see that the parallax angle P is part of a right triangle in which the opposite side is the Earth-Sun distance of one astronomical unit, and the hypotenuse is the distance D to the star. With a little trigonometry that we won't do here, this leads to a simple formula relating a star's parallax angle to its distance. This formula shows that smaller parallax angles go with stars at larger distances, just as we should expect from the fact that parallax is always smaller for more distant objects. Before we continue, check your understanding of the parallax formula by answering this question. Suppose there were a star with a parallax angle of one arc second. How far away would it be? Would its distance be one light year, 3.26 light years, 1 over 3.26 light years, or 32.6 light years? The answer is B, 3.26 light years, which you can see simply by substituting 1 for the angle P in arc seconds, which makes D equal to 3.26 light years. As another example, if the parallax angle were one-tenth of an arc second, the star would be 10 times farther, or 32.6 light years away. To understand the historical importance of parallax, you need only to know that the nearest stars are so far away that their parallax angles are smaller than one arc second, and that angles in arc seconds are far too small to measure with the naked eye. Ancient people therefore could not detect stellar parallax, and Greek scholars realized that this must mean either that Earth was stationary or that the stars were incredibly far away. Because most of them could not imagine the stars could be that far away, they incorrectly concluded that Earth must lie at the center of the universe. Today, telescopes, spacecraft like the European Gaia mission, and precision instruments allow us to measure parallax for stars up to many thousands of light years away, not only proving that Earth really does orbit the Sun, but also providing a key link in the chain of methods that astronomers use to measure distance throughout the universe.